you so much for joining. You are here for the Equity in Action Grant information session. And um, my name is Tracy Mark. I am the program manager for Equity Archives and Media Preservation. And I'm also here with my colleague, Allison Sherrick, who is the digital project and services manager. Okay, so welcome. Yeah, this is our grant, um, Metro Equity in Action Grant. I've been working with this grant for a few years now. We're always really excited to get the projects for these ones and to go through the applications. We've had some really um, great uh, projects in the past. And actually, um, after I stop speaking, I'm going to put a link from our website of previous recipients. I think those give you a really great idea of like what we're looking for and the things that we funded in the past. And um, you can also, we have at the end of this grant, we usually love to do like a presentation for each recipient. So you can view um, most of those presentations are up on the website as well. Uh, so you can hear about recipients talk about um, the whole process and what their projects were like. This is the, the main uh, grant website. Um, and from that page um, th is linked the different information that Tracy uh, just uh, spoke about, including links to the past uh, recipient listing. And there's the program information sheet. Um, uh, there's also a link on, on this slide um, to where you can find information about how to become a Metro member if your institution is not already a member. Um, okay, so main information, um, and this is all, again, you can find this on the website and on the program information sheet. We have our call for applications, which is which was Monday, April 10th. We purposefully do this information session in the middle. So we hope by then you have, um, you thought about projects and you're kind of underway and we're hoping this will support you in starting to write out your application. Um, and your application deadline is Friday, June 9th, 2023 by midnight. Um, this is also online, but you'll send it, you'll send your application through, um, we have a form, a Google form, and then you'll cut, you'll follow it up by sending Allison and I a um, budget and timeline, which we will get into a little bit later. So the grant amount is up to $10,000 per project, and the grant period is from August 14th to June 7th. So you'll start in the middle of August, middle of August and you'll be wrapping up in early June, really. Uh, just going to read through our mission statement for this grant. Uh, that you can also find this on our website in the program information sheet. Uh, the Metro Equity in Action Grant Program aims to support member institutions by providing funding that assists with new and ongoing efforts to preserve our cultural history. We endeavor to fund digital projects that focus on anti-racist practices and marginalized communities. Rooted in community and collaboration, this program encourages meaningful initiatives which cultivate knowledge exchange and a pipeline for discovery and access. So program overview, this is this is very important in terms of the goals that um, you want to strive for. So the Metro Equity in Action Grant Program aims to support Metro member institutions by providing financial support to new or developing digital projects. We will prioritize holistic projects that involve a community engagement component and or decision makers and stakeholders of color. Projects must address at least one of the following themes. So physical or digital collections that are social movement based, uncovering histories of racialized communities or histories of individuals who have experienced marginalization, approaching digital collections with an intersectional anti-racist lens and encourage, encouraging diversity and um, different perspectives in the field. Um, so, these are quite uh, broad, a bit broad, and we that is intentional. We really want you to be creative about the kinds of projects um, that your institution is looking to take on. And um, again, I think this is where the past recipient page really comes in handy because it gives you all sorts of ideas and all sorts of project types. And we're going to name a few project types later on that have been funded in the past. Just going over the general program schedule that's already been mentioned, um, calling out a couple different uh, sessions. So um, 
uh, in addition to like the, the deadline, uh, which again is Friday, June 9th at midnight, um, we anticipate taking about a month or so to review and then um, make a decision with the advisory council for the uh, grant oh, uh, recipients for this program year. And uh, all grant recipients will be notified of your application status by the week of July 24th. Uh, Monday, August 14th, uh, 2023 is when the program officially starts. Um, by mid, uh, by January, about midway through the entire grant period, uh, we will uh, require a progress report and invoice uh, be sent to us. And then um, in late May 2024, um, we will be asking recipients to do a like a final online presentation about your project. And then um, Friday, June 7th, the program ends and all final reports and invoices are due to Metro. Okay, um, eligibility and application requirements. Um, this year uh, is a bit different from previous years. It's an important, important point to make. Um, this year we will only be funding uh, single Metro member institutions. Previous years, we had done a partnership option. And this year, we're just going to stick to just the Metro member. So, um, you know, one Metro member needs to be involved in the application. And um, it's up to $10,000, as we mentioned. So each application must include a project proposal. So the list of points that must be addressed are listed on the program information sheet and um, a monthly timeline and uh, the monthly timeline of the project schedule. We have an example on the um, pro program information sheet and we'll also talk about that a bit later as well. And then a budget of how the funds will be utilized. Also, we do have an example for that too. So categories are list that can be included are listed as well. So this is the sample timeline. Um, so feel free to make a copy of this and use this or use whatever you want really. These are just the things that we're looking for. So obviously we're looking for the month and we're also looking for the task. <laughs> so we gave some examples there of, um, you know, just a detailed explanation of what you're doing towards the project every month. And then we also have who is responsible. So the librarian or archivist or whomever is involved with that task for that month, um, just kind of an expl explanation of that is great. So the budget is also, as we mentioned in the program information sheet, there's a list of categories that you can use. So um, this is budget item, um, budget category, so, and then the amount requested um, and the purpose, you know, what is this, what is the purpose of, 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 this of this budget category? And then the justification is great. Um, so this is like, these rates were quoted to us by this person. This is why we need this for the project sort of thing. Um, this really, between the two of these items, it really gives us a whole picture of like what's happening every month and why it's important. So um, this is a great example and uh, feel free to use it or again, whatever you see fit. But um, this is generally what we're looking for in the budget and the timeline. And I'll also say, this sort of template is going to come up comes up again because there's reimbursement. This is a reimbursement based grant, so we reimburse in two stages. Again, I'll get into this in a few slides, but uh, we ask every time for the institution to give us sort of an updated budget at the halfway point to that covers you know the months that they've been working. So um, this is a document that we come back to a lot. So um, definitely be thoughtful about what you're doing each month and what's realistic and, um, because we'll ask about the, that. So the project examples, um, getting getting back to it, uh, early on we had said digital projects and we just wanted to make sure it's clear it's not only digitization projects. Uh, we have a separate grant program at Metro 
for a digitization project only, um, but they can certainly be a type of uh, project funded through this grant as well, as long as they meet with the, meet with the wider themes. Um, other project examples include uh, web archiving, oral, oral histories, metadata description, remediation type projects, uh, digital curation, uh, digitization projects, and uh, general digital humanities projects. The next thing uh, we wanted to talk about is um, the uh, Digital Culture of Metropolitan New York uh, website. This is a shared repository space um, that the Metro has been maintaining for nearly a decade now. Um, for this grant program, uh, we would strongly encourage, encourage recipients um, to contribute copies of their new digital collections to DCMNY, if applicable, if that is the type of project um, uh, you would be it, uh, creating or, or working towards with this with your uh, institution. Um, I the there are two links to the DCMNY website here, and that is because over the past year we have been in the process of migrating between different platforms. So within the next week and a half, these um, links will change. Um, but I'm happy to share that this is the current site. I'll pop this into the chat, and then. In about a week and a half, um, once we do our, our switch over between the systems, um, that website will be the exact same, except it will have an S at the end. The new uh, DCMNY, I'm going to um, pop over to that in just a second. Um, but just to talk a little bit more about DCMNY, uh, what this is, um, is a shared repository space in uh, hosted by Metro. And um, we uh, have a uh, Re participating institutions are located all over uh, New York State, uh, but principally in the New York City region, metropolitan New York region for now. Um, and uh, this, uh, we provide free online access to digital collections for libraries, archives, museums, and historical societies, um, again, all over New York State, uh, principally in New York City right now. Um, uh, if your institution is interested in participating in uh, DCMNY and contributing, um, and for Metro members up to a certain point, that is like no cost at all. It's part of your Metro membership. It's another great benefit. Um, if you're interested in participating, we'll provide your, uh, you with more information about um, how to do so, such as contribution and metadata and digitization guidelines. Um, they're very, uh, they're like very essential core based um, uh, guidelines, uh, not like the super heavy handed requirements, basically description and good quality um, digital images and other uh, files media that you might have. Um, so I'm just going to show the new DCMNY uh, very quickly. Um, uh, yeah, this is our new site. We're still working on theming and site building, um, but you can see uh, we have collections from institutions all over New York City. Um, you can see the list of contributing institutions here. Um, yeah, we're, we're very excited and happy to launch this uh, revamped uh, the site using uh, updated technology. Uh, the repository platform that we're using is Archipelago, which is an open source repository platform that Metro is the uh, development home for. So if you have any questions about that, please reach out to us if you're interested in participating. Um, or if you're just interested in about, about the site, um, please, uh, you know, stay tuned for more information for the official launch. We'll also want, uh, announce it in the general Metro, uh, channels that we have, a uh, newsletter on our, on our plane, our regular website and, um, in other outreach methods. So as I mentioned earlier, this is a reimbursement based grant. So, um, Initial costs are spent by the institution, and then in, we reimburse in two phases. So those two, phase one is August 15th, you know, the day after the grant starts for, through to January 19th. Um, so this is the first half of the grant, and we're going to ask you, there's a checklist on the web, on our program information sheet. And we basically at this point, at, on January 19th, we'll require you to give us an invoice, um, receipts for any um, services. Um, well, sorry, let me be more clear. An invoice or receipts for anything that is spent from August 15th through the January 19th. We'll require an invoice 
with the total amount spent from August 15th to January 19th will require a W-9 from your institution and will require um, a written narrative report based on what you did during from August 15th to June 19th. And then we'll do this process again um, from January 20th, 20th to June 7th. So um, if there's any big takeaway, it's on January 19th, we'll require, that is the halfway point and we'll require all your invoices rece and receipts. And then we'll do this again on June 7th. Again, there's a checklist of everything that you'll need um, on the program information sheet. And also for this grant, we'll have, we have about three meetings per year as like a cohort, um, those who, the recipients, the institutions. And so we'll be reminding you of this several, at several points. So there won't be, um, you won't be doing it alone. We will be there to ask, um, for you to ask any questions if you have any along the way. But uh, it's really important uh, that uh, these things are submitted to us, but we will remind you, so don't worry. And then, so the midterm, as we mentioned, the midterm is on January 19th, and then final invoices are on June 7th. I'm gonna just answer one question that just came in that is relevant to this, um, which is what if uh, what if we would be spending most of our money in the first phase or does it have to be spent throughout the year? That is okay. Um, really based on your project that this varies from project to project. Some people spend very little money in the first phase phase and then spend all of it in the second phase or vice versa, that doesn't really matter to us. Really at the end of the um, entire grant, I'm just looking that, to see that your budget lined up with, with um, how much you spent. So what, wh when you spend most of that doesn't really matter to us. It's mostly like um, at the end of it. And during the midpoint, I can look at your budget and look at your timeline and say, okay, that made sense. And like these numbers match up. <laughs> and then also I'll just quickly answer another question about indirect costs in the budget. I would actually recommend you email us about that because that could mean a lot. Sometimes we work, we work with CUNY schools and that can mean sort of the research foundation. We know that that's part of it and they require a certain amount. So um, depending on exactly what you mean by um, that, I'm going to actually put my email in the chat and I would recommend you just reach out to us and we can just have a, a quick um, conversation about it. Just going to go quickly through the selection process. Uh, so award grantees are going to be selected by the Metro uh, program managers, uh, Tracy and myself, and also the Equity in Action Advisory Council. The members of that are listed on the Equity in Action grant homepage. Uh, grantees will be chosen by the strength of projects and how they relate to the themes mentioned earlier. Um, project funding is intended to be used for goods and services directly related to the project activities and efforts of member institutions. So helpful hints. Ask questions. Um, we're a resource, really. Like we want you to ask. Um, you can ask about projects or really any question that comes along the way. Uh, feel free to email us. I believe we put June second as the deadline. <laughs> if ask us your questions by then, and we um, are usually very quick to turn around usually within a day or so. Um, so please, if you have anything that comes up, I think the best thing is to ask us questions <laughs> and we'll be happy to answer them. And we're also happy to have quick meetings if, um, if we, it requires more of a conversation. And also every question in the program, every question in the eligibility and application requirements, part of the program information sheet is literally verbatim what you're gonna be asked in the application form. So what I think is always a great idea is to make a separate document with each of these questions listed, fill them out, and then when you're ready to apply and everything looks good, 
then go to the application form and just kind of copy and paste your answers in there. I think it makes a lot easier than trying to go back and forth or trying to do it right in the, the Google form. I think the best way is just to um, do it in your own uh, Google Doc or whatever document you use separately and then copy and paste it and it'll save you a lot of time and you won't have to go back and forth. This is our email, contact us. Um, submit your queries by Friday, June 2nd, we would prefer. Um, and then a week from then is when the when everything will be due. Is the advisory council who is, they're, they're really wonderful. We just met with them. And uh, this is also on the website. And again, the application is the application form the Google form, which will, you know, be sent right to our emails. And then you follow it up by emailing Allison and I, the budget and the timeline. Like, this is all throughout the documentation. The application form itself will have you click a box at the end saying that you sent us that as well. So um, I don't think it's hard. I don't think it's um, easy to miss, but I just wanted to say that again, it's really like a two part situation the Google form and then following it up with your timeline and budget. Thank you so much for coming. Let us know if you have any questions. We really hope you apply and uh, good luck and have a great day. Thank you, everyone. Thanks everyone. Take care.